Tonight is June the 25th, 2017, and I have a nice little uh, heat kit uh, receiver here, made in 1972. Here's the original manual with it, just in beautiful shape. It's called an AR-1302. Yeah, right, there it is, copyright 1972. Been around for 45 years. Wanted to show you how it performs. Also, and use the analog discovery. I'm in a, uh, a shop here, another shop that I have, and I, and I don't have a lot of equipment over here, just the uh, analog discovery equipment. Show you the front of this jewel. Nice and green. It's got one burned out power light right there. But uh, looks really nice and clean. Turn the speakers on and off, power, blend, mute, blah, 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 all that stuff. I'm running it into the aux port. And I got it on a um, 8 ohm load over here. Got the signal generator from the um, Analog Discovery 2 driving it right here. The aux port, if you can see that. It's a little dark in here, but I'm trying to keep the glare down. And the output is, uh, well, maybe I gotta turn the light on just for a second. Whoops, sorry. Sorry for the fumbling. But I'm trying to keep the glare down. Yeah, there's its output connected up here. I did do what you gentlemen suggested and bought a uh, polarizing filter. Here's what it is right here. I've got it on the camera right now. The thing was less than $8. Free shipping, and it does work. Here's the front of the PC right now, and of course I'm going to turn it just to show you what it does here. So I can shut the picture all the way off if I polarize it right there, and I think you end up seeing me as in the reflection. I'm just turning the front of the lens, and then of course that's, I guess. So I think I just need to turn it down to maybe about right there. Yeah, because I was checking out some videos I made with it earlier. It seems to be doing what I needed to do. Okay, well, anyway, enough of that. Let's crank up uh, right here. Our analog discovery. Let's turn on our wave generator. Set it to uh, 2 kilohertz. And sign wave and say run. And we go back up here to waveform. Then turn on our scope. Uh, turn off channel 2 and say run. Well, there it is. Well, actually, I've already got it running. Let's see if it's really running. I'll vary the volume here. Yeah, there it is. You're up to about point of clipping. Somewhere right there where the power supply noise starts coming in. Let me rotate the uh, polarizing filter just a little bit. There you go. Sure, it sure works, doesn't it? So there it is. It started doing that a little bit on my last night too. I'm not sure what's causing that. Maybe that's maybe it has a problem. I don't know if that's a problem or a loose connection. But in either case, here's its voltage. It's about uh, let's see, right here in the middle is 12 and a half, 13, 13. It's about 14 volts. And if you square that and divide it by eight, you get its uh, average power. It's actually, it's actually not too bad. 14 uh, squared 8 divide is a 24 and a half watts. It's rated at 20, so it's actually doing a pretty good job. Um, both channels do the same thing. It's a receiver. Beautiful job building it. Looks like it's uh, brand new practically. But if anything, I wanted to uh, use the uh, the AD2, the Analog Discovery 2, to uh, evaluate this little amp. So there it is, clipping just slightly. Let's turn it down just a little bit. We don't want any clipping yet. Okay, so we got our signal. Oh yeah, that's nice and steady. A little bit of power supply noise down here jittering, I think. But we do see it, so we've got the uh, 
wave generator running and the scope. Let's go over here and turn on the um, spectrum. That'll probably stop our scope. And then we say run. And of course we're in a linear mode here from 0 hertz to a megahertz. Well that's not going to work. So we change this to uh, 20 hertz. Change this to uh, 20 kilohertz. We're going to this little drop down. Change it from linear to logarithmic and there it is. Okay, well, we're, we're clipping a little bit. So you see, just the way it comes with the default, it, it's telling us that we can do better than that. Let me turn down the volume just ever so slightly. There we go. You can see a second harmonic coming in there just a little bit. If you double click this uh, big one, it tells you it's two kilohertz. It tells you this one's four kilohertz. So in um, in its default uh, settings, besides you know changing the, the the start and stop frequency and putting it in log instead of linear, uh, it comes up with a range of 200 dBV with a top at 20. Okay, now that's pretty cool. And then if you want to see its harmonics before it starts doing anything, you know, really bad. It's not doing anything really bad there. We can change this, I found out, to about 80. That's, that's a good number. And then change this one to, uh, oops, I always, always do that the wrong way. I always do that the wrong way. Say to zero. And well, we gotta go a little bit more than zero. Say minus 20. And there it is. There's a, there's a pretty good uh, spectral display of it. Really quite good. I got no issue with that. Now if we go back to um, where it came from at 200, uh, and then we do our, um, I don't remember where this was set, zero. Shoot, can't remember. Maybe it was set at 20. Yeah, some, it was set something like that. Okay, and then if you run the volume up, let's watch this thing closely. I'm trying to hold the camera real steady. If you run the volume up until it starts clipping, all of a sudden you see, there you go, see what, what we saw a while ago? You can say, well, that's not too good. So we know we're overdriving the amp. And if we go back to our 80, and our uh, 20, maybe minus 40, bring that thing up. Whoops, not minus 40, that's too much. Minus 30, well, we, we see quite, <laughs> whoa, sorry, 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 got, got to zoom out. We see quite a uh, healthy display there, don't we? So we're we're overdriving it quite a bit. And if we go back to the uh, window and go to the scope, we probably got to yeah we got to start it again. Yeah, we we can see that it's uh, you know clipping there, clipping there. It, uh, that that jittering is you know, we're probably loading the power supply as heavy as it can be. So the little AD2 actually does a good job. The signal generator, the scope, and the uh, spectrum analyzer um, all, all did actually quite a good job of, of evaluating it. Let's see, where is the scope now? Let's go back to the spectrum. Yeah, see, I guess it, uh, maybe it's the PC. Maybe it just doesn't have enough uh, oomph to, you know, to run it all at the same time. So that probably stopped the, uh, let's turn trace two off up here. That probably uh, stops the scope. I guess only one can run it at a time. And then we can uh, run the game back down a little bit. So it cleans up pretty good right there. Right down a little bit more. No, we don't need to run down that low. Just not there. Not too much. About, about right there. That's okay. That's where we've got our 80 dB. And then if we go back one more time to the scope and look at it, make it run. Yeah, cleaned it right up. See there? Look at the tips. Nice and clean. This is nice and clean. So it actually does a actually does a good job. Sorry I keep forgetting to run in and out. Yeah, still got glare, but I can't stop it all. But at least the, uh, the polarizing filter actually did a good job. Yeah, here's what it looks like. It just looks black. Can't much see through it. <laughs> well, there you go. That's using the little uh, Analog Discovery 2. 
signal generator scope and spectrum analyzer and actually uh, did quite a nice job. Uh, if, if you read some of the videos, if you read some of the comments on the video, the one I posted on it, the second one I posted on this AD2, you see that the uh, voltmeter is not working quite right yet, but uh, they say they're going to fix it in some, um, some later software releases. So there you go. Thanks for watching. And uh, oh, I got some other projects I got to show you here that I'll be posting here soon. I got uh, really taken with the uh, with, with with the uh, um, log periodic antenna. I made this thing out of a threaded rod, and it goes from about 160 megahertz there. That's the longest one. The shortest one up here will be like 700 megahertz. I don't know if you if you studied the. Uh, Long periodic antennas, but they're very broadband. See, it's insulated up here, at the, and this is the feed point. This is ground, and then there's the wire running from the center one over to this side. DC wise, just thinking, you know, it's just a solid block of metal because see, it's connected together down here. I've been scanning it a little bit with a, uh, a device I have that's sort of like that rig expert, but, but it only covers. Uh, Mm, 100 to 160 or something, and then 400, 470. I don't remember. And at 470, the uh, the SWR, this thing is 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 flat. It's like according to that thing, like 1.06. I'm just really taken with this thing. See, I just made a couple of points that this one would be 450 megahertz uh, dipole. I think the way it's described is uh, it's, uh, it's, it's like a Yagi, but in a Yagi, if you add elements, you increase the gain. But in a uh, log periodic antenna, if you add elements, you increase the bandwidth. Pretty cool, huh? So, yeah, this is just to stiffen it up and, and keep them separated. And it's tapered like that on purpose. I didn't do any kind of great mathematical design on it. I just patterned it after uh, a lot of them that I've been watching. And, and, and a little, kind of really small one, military grade one that I have right here that I got at an estate sale. This guy right here, built like a tank, isn't it? Along with that little dish over there, I love those antennas. But anyway, nice little uh, Keith Kit receiver, not sure what I'm gonna do with it, but um, the amplifier part checks out good. I'm not sure about the receiver part yet, the tuner, but we'll see. Thanks for watching.